me. Yeah. And maybe I should take him on and give updates on this very podcast. At least just have him on the show. Tony Puma. Get a burger with Tony Puma. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. That's a... Um... That's a terrifying story. I, I can't. I, I, what I, would you do if I'm, a man named Tony Puma came to you in your workplace, Matthew? You're the manager. He says, can I speak to the manager? And he's and you're like, yes. Uh, what can I do for you? He says, I want to take you out for coffee because I think I could be your mentor. I could really turn your life around. We can make investments together. This is not a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I guess the first thing I do is one of the first things you did, make sure he's not wearing a ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, see if there's uh, any potential for this to go any further. Uh, no, I would not go. I I don't I don't like speaking to strangers. I don't like speaking to. Uh, but how do you uh, turn them down? Just say I'm busy, man. Or like, <laughs> sure, and then I give them my number, but it's a fake number. Ooh, classic. Yeah, something like that. I I like not being truthful with uh, things like that, and just just kind of pushing it off, hoping it goes away. Now, Matthew, do you ever wonder if? This is the reason why you and I aren't more successful in business. Because we're not accepting helping hands from... From Pumas? From, yeah, from that one specific Puma. <laughs> um, I mean, it's possible. You never know. Maybe Tony Puma was my gateway to success, and I closed that gate and put a lock on it. Yeah, okay, so if Anthony Puma comes to me at this day and age, I'll definitely take him up on his offer, because I want to know what you missed out on. Mm. I'm going to take, take what you didn't. Okay, so if I can contact Tony Puma, yeah, and say I got I got someone for you, and say I've got someone who's interested in being mentored by you, yeah, he's got a lot of potential, uh, and I think you should talk to this guy. Yeah. You'll do the meeting. You'll go through with it. I'd go through with it. It's never too late to have a bigger brother. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. So Matthew, this mm-hmm. winter was. The 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Oh, yeah. Do you watch the Olympics at all? I don't. Uh, it it kind of aired for a little bit. Yeah? I'm sure it aired for a long time. Yeah, but, wrapped uh, up a while ago. I believe we are in the um, Paralympics zone right now. I no. think it's two weeks of Olympics, two weeks of Paralympics. Maybe they fit some Special Olympics in at the end. Yeah. I mean, I was never a fan of the Olympics. I think I've said that before. The Olympics are just... Uh, going back to my my youthful days, the Olympics were just something that get rid of cartoons. Mm. And and now you're the... just preempting my, you know, afternoon cartoons. Yeah, Disney afternoon. Where yeah. where are you? No, it's just somebody Someone's running or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now if you're talking to Winter Olympics, they always sneak up on me because I'm never prepared for them. They don't get as much hype. It's um, true. And I watched a little bit of the Winter Olympics and I was horrified. How and so? The, the the things that Did are you happening. Watch the biathlon. The only thing I, I saw was a little bit of curling, okay. which I love watching it's great. curling. It's fantastic on television. Um, but it's when they're going down. Is it the luge or the bobsledding? Wherever you're going oh, down. You have, you have the four-man bobsled. Okay, one man. I'm talking about one man. So that uh, head first or feet first? Head first. That is the skeleton. Chin on the ice. That's a good way to get to your skeleton. <laughs> it's a uh, horrifying Sebastian. I don't know why people do it. Because uh, they can win a gold medal? At what cost? And it's not it's not impressive to me. I mean I could No? Could I not just take their place at the last minute, lie down on on that thing and just scrape my little chin against the ice? You'd probably your time would probably be terrible and or you'd fly off the track. What do, what do I have to do to not make that happen? Well, there's some leaning. I think they have little breaks. And uh that's pretty much the gist of it. So I could probably learn that in like a half hour. Lean yeah. this way. Lean yeah, that I way. bet you wouldn't be that good at it, though. Don't don't touch your skin to the ice. Well, the, the, their skin is not exposed. It's so, so close. Yes. Anyway, it just sounds like a recipe for design. There's nothing in it that's admirable to me. I mean, you win in the real Olympics, the Summer Olympics, like when you're, you're faster than everybody else on your own feet. Mm-hmm. Um, but that depends there's... on what, you, what, what, what event you win in. If you're like on the... I'm the best in the world at ping pong. Then you're the best in the world at ping pong. That's still a feat. Is that is that not better? Is that not as good as doing the skeleton? Best in the world at skeleton? Skeleton is like the, the bottom of the barrel for me. I mean, that's just... You're Speed just walking. weight. You're just weight on top of a sled. Speed walking. Yeah. That's not in the Olympics. Yeah. Speed walking is in yeah, the Olympics? Well, uh, well, at what point do you start running? No, you've you got to keep one foot on the ground at all times. Okay. Well, 
still that's still you're still better than someone else at it because of your own merit same as skeleton I find like it's it's more just your weight and the slide. you're getting the lean. You're leaning left. You're leaning right. The right time. The right amount of leaning. Yeah, but I mean, people don't watch. Uh, it's like you watch a bike uh, get a good running start. <laughs> you watch uh, people racing on bicycles. Mm-hmm. You're watching that to see somebody fall and take out a bunch of other people. I am. And you're watching but this. That's uh, not necessarily true. You're watching the skeleton to see somebody's head get clipped on the ice or see their whole. Uh, body flip out of the me of either the i'm just impressed at how much control they have at such a high speed yeah i don't know it just seems like everything in the winter olympics is horrifying how about the biathlon uh, it's skiing and shooting guns at the same time no they ski they stop they shoot some targets they ski some more that just seems crazy <laughs> that just seems like you're mixing well what's to say you can't just mix anything together and call it a sport that's a good point i always consider that one sort of like james bond villain training yeah um <laughs> but i mean there was you know there, there's like uh moguls where you're skiing bouncing on those little bumps there mm-hmm. that's got to be crazy on your knees there's my favorite story of this year's olympics so far is um there was a hungarian woman who really made herself the easiest path to the Olympics. She found what her country didn't really compete at and then uh, qualified by going to enough international tournaments. So if like all the best skiers in the world, and it was one of these things where it's like you go down a hill and then there's a jump, you do some tricks, you do that a couple times and that's that's the event. Um, So every time that there was an international event that all the best in the world were competing at, let's say in Colorado, she would go to the one in Sweden. So she had, competed in enough international events to qualify for the Olympics. Then her Olympic medal run, or not medal, her Olympic um, uh, uh, competing run was she just skied down, and at the jump she went off the jump and landed. There was no trick. And she just kept skiing down. No no flare or anything. Just she skied down. Yeah. Just on skis. Just skiing. A lot of it was gravity. Straight ski. Yeah, Yeah. A lot of gravity. Um, but she hacked the system. She got to go to the Olympics. She got to be an Olympian. Did she win anything? No. But she, for the rest of her life, she is an Olympian because she managed to play the game the right way and just ski down a hill. Is it hacking the system to to do that? I mean, she qualified. She represented her country, right? But like every, yes, poorly. Yeah. Everyone else in that event tried some tricks she just was just like i'm making it to the bottom and that is my accomplishment yeah. baby steps i mean what, I would it be better to not be in it at all than to just perform adequately uh no i think she's better off this way because she can forever claim that she's an olympian yeah what does that i mean get at you? least if you on the jump you do like a little starfish or something you just do a little trick yeah but she was just like no i'm dead set on just make it to the bottom yeah well that's it you start getting these pipe dreams and you start that's how you start breaking your limbs that's that's how i feel yeah she's not she wasn't trained to do starfish in the air that's true that's a good point i don't know if she was trained to do anything no just uh what do you do once you've you've been in the olympics what can that get you you ride that after the rest of your life you get on a box of cheerios well maybe in hungary maybe you could go talk you could probably spend the rest of your life talking to like elementary schools around hungary about, about how, did... how if you believe in yourself <laughs> Yeah. You can make it to the Olympics. I did it. Yeah. I didn't win. No, I didn't win anything. Yeah. If you... Was I competitive? No. <laughs> but I was there. Yeah. If you do the bare minimum. It's a dope party. <laughs> I went to this cool party, party in South Korea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it's basically just saying if you if you pick something that there's no competition in mm-hmm. and just do the bare minimum, people uh, will remember your name for a bit. That's <laughs> Yeah, it's that's as good as any of you in Hungary, in Hungary, specifically yeah. in Hungary. Yeah. I don't know the woman's name at all. <laughs> you don't even know her name. No clue. Ah, uh, man, I just don't like competition. I think it it makes me sick to my stomach. Really? Yeah, I feel like you're sometimes competitive, though, Matthew. Yeah, but I'm. I don't know. I don't understand myself a lot of the time. <laughs> it's I hate the idea of sports mm-hmm. because the they're competitive. Yeah, it, it just it. It really just makes me sick to my stomach. But I don't I don't know. I am competitive, but I want to just have the edge. Like I think I like the idea of cheating. Yeah, I think yes, yes. Like the a friend of ours, former guest of the podcast, uh, Alexander Roxanne Laurent. I know this about Alex is that 
he's sometimes in sports they talk about the game within the game mm. that sometimes there's a, a smaller simpler game within let's say a sport that if someone can win that smaller game they have an edge in the okay. bigger game um the game within the game to him is is cheating he <laughs> loves cheating he's so happy to cheat it satisfies him so much to be able to cheat and not be caught yeah it's like that is the game that he's playing you could be playing scrabble but stealing letters is his real game wow and he'll win at that game and then maybe not even win at scrabble but he's so happy that he got to cheat i feel like cheating without gaining anything without winning i mean like... just making it tougher for the for the real winner is sure yeah good in its own right yeah it's like there's no more s's yeah. There's a, supposed to be a lot of S's. Yeah, now yeah. there's none. We're all out of S's. All I'm yeah. getting is vowels. That's, I can't make a letter without any consonants. That's his And he's game. just like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been playing Scrabble all wrong. Because uh, maybe I should just make it harder for the other person. <laughs> yeah, start cheating a little instead more. Instead of waiting to be able to spell out, like, xylophone. <laughs> oh, I've got xylophone. I always Someone wait. Someone put down an X. I always wait, and I always <laughs> lose. <laughs> oh. oh. All right, Matthew. Let's get into this burger a little bit. Yeah. Do you want to take the lead on describing this this cheeseburger? I mean, if you've ever eaten at a Belle Provence or just a, a regular no frills diner, you've had this burger. Um, it was there was nothing special about it. I got uh, just a regular patty. Was this thing grilled in front of us? Did we see it happen? No. I mean, we probably could have if we turned yeah. our heads. But... but it was definitely a frozen patty, right? They're not pounding the meat out. I don't know if it was a frozen patty. It was pretty juicy if it was indeed a frozen patty. I, I don't think it was a frozen patty, though. That's the thing. I have a lot of negative descriptions leading up to it, but I think I enjoyed the burger itself. It was, uh, for what it was, it was much better than a, a Belle Provence burger. It was a little squished up burger, and it was the kind I could probably eat three of. Maybe put one in my pocket, eat a little bit later. It's, mm. it's, I don't think we've had one of these in a while, and I forgot how good they were. So this was a sesame seed topped toasted bun, mm. uh, not very thick, but I found kind of juicy burger grilled on a flat top grill, uh, coleslaw, relish, and onion underneath the burger with a piece of American cheese on top of the burger. Uh, I think there was also mustard. And uh, Matthew, you suck your teeth into that burger before I did. I was working on my poutine. I think I finished my poutine before I took a bite of the burger. Yeah. So I was saving that burger, savoring that burger. Matthew, what were your first thoughts when you sunk your teeth into this burger? Pleasantly surprised. It was uh, much, like you said, juicier than, than I would have expected. Not in a sickening fat uh, way. No. But, um, I mean, all the taste was there. A mm -hmm. lot more taste than some of the bigger burgers we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Some of the... The ones you have to unhinge your jaw to get in. Mm -hmm. um, and it was real simple. I just had ketchup, mustard. I think it may have had diced onions on there. Um, but that was it with the cheese. Yeah. And I uh, I just really enjoyed it. I kind of wished I had a little more. But I had that poutine. Mm -hmm. So that filled up my, my belly. I finished my meal and was thinking about getting a second burger. But I was supposed to meet some people for pizza later on. So I decided, oh, I'll save my appetite. Yeah. But uh, I, I was really craving having another burger as soon as I was done that first one. Nice little cheeseburger, like Matthew said, juicy patty, not too thick of a patty, sort of that same sort of like flat diner style patty that you would imagine from, let's say, Belle Provence. I should have gotten a double burger now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, but it was it was an, a flavorful, juicy patty. You could tell that they seasoned it a little bit. Maybe it was just a little salt and pepper, but you could taste that saltiness and the juiciness of the burger. Um, not overcooked. Uh, the cheese added a little extra something. Even though the cheese didn't really melt into the patty, it really felt like they assembled it the moment before bringing it to us. Yeah. As opposed to sometimes they'll put the cheese on and let it melt onto the burger patty, oh, which yeah. I generally prefer, but I didn't mind it this time. Sometimes messier for the grill cleanup. Mm -hmm, that's true. And uh, some places, I uh, diners like this will often dress a burger like they would a hot dog. With coleslaw, onions, relish, mustard. Um, and I don't always... I, I rarely am in the mood for that, I'll be honest. I much prefer a lettuce, tomato, onion type of burger. Huh. Well, I... You get I, that crispness. You get that hmm. freshness. You don't like tomato. So that changes the game. The coleslaw kind of adds the 
crunchy crispness of 